a, a friend's, uh, actually a friend of mine's friend who sort of, it was a Saturday afternoon, 52 year old male fell off, fell off a scooter and uh, ER, from the ER the x-ray came to me and uh, so my registrar was asking me, Ki, bhai, shall I put it tomorrow on Monday morning's list? So how many of you would, with this x-ray, would put you on the Monday morning's list with a CT, let's say with a CT, Monday morning's list, put your hands up or you won't operate at all. So, okay, I'll just go back to the panel. Swapnil, start from the side. Uh, anything you want to do with this, go s send the patient to CT. Patient is in ER, back slab put on, the registrar put on a nice back slab, and you come in after four to five hours, after finishing OPD, uh, you ask for a CT. When, you, when will you plan the surgery? Uh, once, depend upon the soft tissue. If the soft tissues are too tight, we have to wait at least, I mean, for these type of cases where there is a bicondylar fracture, usually it is a high velocity and we have to, I at least wait for 7 to 10 days before Thanks. going in for surgery. Rajiv, yeah. I, I, I will, huh, also, I will like to do a Doppler also in this case. Absolutely. So this, this gentleman actually, if you can't see, this, he's a, a post-CABG patient, he has got a vein graft from the same side and uh, I said, why plaster khol ke dikha mujhe kya hal hai? And this is how it looked like. So, a lot of things change after you have looked at it. So, coming to the CT, I mean, uh, 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 regarding the CT, is it, do you just ask for a normal CT, 3D CT, with a, it's a pricing difference. A normal CT is 3,000, a 3D CT is as much as an MRI now, it's about 8,000, 8, 9,000. I usually see all the films, all 2D cuts and plus 3D cut, 100%. What does the 3D give you extra that uh, 2D does give, doesn't give you? Uh, it's just the orientation what you give. Anybody yeah, wants you know, to refer? On the panel here. But I think uh, compare a 2D to a 3D. It's a, it's a price difference. Yeah, so there is a price difference, but uh, in a, when you're operating in a team, so uh, experienced surgeons will probably know which fragments to fix on a 2D. Yeah. But for a, a junior to understand the gravity of the situation, which fragments to fix, a 3D might be better. So if there are students, DNB students, you would want a 2D with a 3D. Anybody wants to differ on this, sir? Any difference in opinion? Well, basically, you get proper idea about the sizes of the fragments so that you are dealing with and how you should fix it. Okay, sir. Any, no, the, what about MRI? How Anybody wants an MRI for these? Sir, uh, Rajiv, yeah. 3D gives you apex. You can actually see where is the apex. Uh, the, uh, that is one very valid point. The apex comes up better. Otherwise, I think the 3D is more of showing to the patient's relatives. It looks quite impressive and show to the patient's relatives, isn't it? Otherwise, uh, a 2D with a planning in your mind, because what you want to see actually is how many fragments and where the apex is. In an axial cut, you can see how many fragments, and on a, a coronal sag cuts, you'll, you'll know the apex. Yes, Sunil. Yep. Yeah, we, we will, we'll come to that. But you are asking, you're asking, so you're asking scan, scan first. So point taken, point taken. So, uh, what is it? so next, next uh, among, uh, sorry. So we have a choices, elevate, uh, starting from here, just elevate and back slab, calculin pin traction, spanning external fixator. So anybody, how many of you in this hall would just put a back slab and leave it for the next 10 days? Nobody. How many would put a spanning external fixator on? Excellent. Because even uh, day before yesterday, I got a patient with a back slab on for two weeks post. Everybody is giving I know, you I know what Sopnil is doing. Sorry? I know what Sapnil is doing, Com combination of two. I, as I said, everybody is answering the standard answer. What they do it in their practice is still different than what the answer is. <laughs> yes. Sapnil, so, what do you do? I, I usually do distal TBL pin. And back slab. Sorry? And, and back a back slab. No plaster, only distal TBL pin with a traction of around 7 kgs and I do uh, maxal dressings on that. Are you comfortable with the uh, shearing forces still acting because the calculin pin traction does not stabilize the fracture? Are you happy with that? I'm still happy with okay. that. Okay, I mean it's another way of looking, another way of skinning the cat. Sir, the Even the X fix, it doesn't reduce the fracture. It decreases shear forces at the fracture, not reduce. You see what's happened there. The fracture, so you're basically spanning it out to length, so it's easier for you to go in later and decrease the shear forces of the skin. The skin healing is faster. 
uh, that is the only thing, Swapnil, I think. Yes. I mean, and the, the thing is, if the cases like this comes and where, uh, I, I mean, the fitness is an issue and skin, there is a major issue regarding skin, then I will apply. I have applied external fixer only in two cases. Okay. So, so different ways of skin, to skin a cat, but I think the standard thing is, if you put a spanning fixator on, are there persons on the panel, anybody else most differ? For me, for a limited number of patients, uh, x fix majority I would try to manage with the back slap under close medical supervision and a facility to observe the blisters, etc., by anterior slab, which is detachable, and keeping them under observation. The, this slab application doesn't rule out a good clinical examination of ruling out compartment syndrome, looking at soft tissue. Uh, the X fix, there are two problems with X fix to me. One is it stretches a tissue under swelling, which itself can raise compartment pressure to some extent. That is one. Number two, the pin tract infection is a persistent uh, ongoing problem with uh, these patients of tibial condyle fracture. And number three, it puts patient to one more anesthesia. So there are three issues. Uh, I would try to minimize external fixator to a limited extent where a good reduction is very mandatory for holding the fracture patterns. So how would you maintain a reduction in a back slab? I mean, every day you're looking at it, looking at the blister, every day you're removing the, you know, looking at it. So how would you uh, decrease the shear forces happening while you're looking at the skin improving? The, the, the tibial condylar fractures are unique that the fracture fragment mobility is not great. And, and a careful application of a back slab with three or four persons available and anterior slab applied well fitting slab i think it it, it works in um, our setup that's no problem uh, I have a question, anybody else? yeah um, whether you put a fixator or a back slab the healing of a blisters or the soft tissue time required for the soft tissue to settle is same it does not make any difference it is not that with the fixator you will be operating early or the soft tissue will settle or you'll get a wrinkle sign earlier. It is almost the same. The same elevation back slab and keep the anterior side open so that you can actually see and observe what Dr. Chandak has mentioned. You don't have to do a repeated dressing. For that, putting a fixator is uh, not required in all the cases. Sir, uh, I, I just have... Fixator early, especially when there is a, a badly displaced. Uh, See, double theoretically, AO, we talks about the fixator. So from the stage, you can talk about the fixator. In the private practice, as you can see, this again two very active practitioners. They are talking about this. We have been able to do this without any problem. So those who have been washed out, brainwashed by the AO, they will have to do a X fix. There is no other way. Cut sir, it's only AO, nahi hai, sir. It's all over the world. Structure, I will put external fixator for this patient. This, this is not all. It's, it's not AO alone. So it's all over the world. It's a different ways of Bella to Bella Cat. But if you have a fixator on, all the, all these are the good, successful, absolutely, very sir. competent surgeons. The difference, sir. Different ways of Bella. That's beauty about orthopedics. There's never a single answer. But we try to go a middle path regime, which gives us reason to go and. If the ability is there, and as I said, if the paying problem is not there, would you? I, I personally opt for a fixator because it just doesn't it's just a simple single surgery of half an hour, and it's easier for me to I can send the patient home after that. And then my chap looks after it at home and he comes back. And uh, I just want to defer there is that my the ones that have fixators on usually by seven days they're ready. The ones that have had enough fixators on sometimes take up to three weeks to heal up because that area, whatever you do, there's a bit of movement happening. So I think we'll uh, defer there and carry on. Now, span scan. Sorry, Regarding uh, sc uh, the blisters, uh, do you pop them? I mean, if you do, you do you pop them or do you just let them just settle there? Just let them settle down. No need to uh, puncture them or okay. to make it them open. Nothing doing. They all settle down over a period of 10 to 12 days is the most ideal time when there is a blister. If they are hemorrhagic blister, they may take more time. Okay, so I think the, the OT is getting ready, so just go through. There is a lot of literatures, you can pop them, you can, uh, now what they're saying is there's de-roofing with uh, silver, uh, whatever, are they ready in OT? So, uh, is ready in OT? 
So, so regarding uh, this, this is the CT. Uh, with just with the CT, what is your plan and the X-ray? What would your plan be regarding fixation? Uh, one, uh, the skin is ready. Do you have a picture of the skin? This is the skin. Skin is getting ready, and that was the. What do, what will your plan be? One plate, two plate, no plate, so, three plates, four plates. So, so an honest question to the panel is: with so many classifications that are now happening, have you become any wiser? With the his question is: with so many classification floating about, first Shaska came, then Lu came, then Shaska Khufri came. Do you think have have you become more wiser with the classifications and with the planning eventually eventual management? Are you are you more wiser? Has it made any difference? How if 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 it is a multi I mean uh, multi condylar fracture or there are fragments intraduodal fragments which are more, then it is always better to stuck up with the uh, three column concept because we want to fix each fragment if needed. So now we are shifting towards a fragment specific fixation. So it is always better to look around all the bicondylar, I mean all the fracture pattern and then address them accordingly. The Schatzker in bicondylar or complex intraarticular fracture, I think it, it cannot be used. But only in split depression still we, split or lateral condyle that we can use or isolated posterior medial still we can go with with Schatzker. But according to me nowadays with the high stratum, as we can see all these fra fractures are coming up. So it is always better to follow the three column concept because it is column specific and now the newer concept coming as a me mechanism of injury. So where there is a compression pattern, where there is a uh, distraction. So according to that you have to choose the plate and where the plate should be applied. So that is a better thing what we should follow, I think. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, three things have changed with the classification. One, a post of slabs or a plaster has gone. That has made a big difference, a very early mobilization and a fantastic range of motion. The gross virus displacement, posterior displacement, they have all gone with the uh, concept of uh, column classifications. Uh, Okay, so I think uh, we just go ahead because uh, OT is ready. So because there are three columns, we went ahead and put in three plates for these. This is uh, at least about uh, seven, seven years old, this patient and, and uh, good articular sub uh, The important thing is articular, initially we spoke only about articular. It's not articular alone. It's also metaphyseal realignment, which is as important as articular. You don't get metaphyseal realignment, metaphyseal support. Whatever articular support you do, it doesn't work. So now Shaska himself has came up and said this metaphysis is more important than articular in fact and this is how it went and goes to heal up and this is a f you should not have this is the patient that is a some other this is, a, this is how the function is at about uh, uh, six months down the line so i think they're, they're ready in ot and my whole yeah. message here is identify the columns support the columns articular reduction and metaphysical realignment are as important so i think we hand over to ot i yeah. think isn't it